Hi, I'm Harry Halpin. I'm a researcher here at MIT, where I work under the British inventor of the web, Tim Berners-Lee, at the World Wide Web Consortium, where we work on the technical protocols, you know, HTML, XML, these sort of things, to help lead the web to its full potential. Now, you know, for us, and you know, particularly myself as a University of Edinburgh graduate, I'm very excited to see philosophers tackling problems related to the interface between knowledge, intelligence, and technology. And you know, these questions are not simply abstract philosophical questions, but really have a profound and deep impact on how we build and design new kinds of technologies. Now, it sounds silly, but it's not. It may, for example, be silly to sort of say that one understands everything which is on the web when one is searching the web, just as it's silly to sort of say, just because you walked into the library, you know everything in all the books in the library. Um, however, it does seem that something has changed with the advent of ubiquitous, low latency web access. For example, you know, how we interact with maps has definitely changed. We no longer really have to know where we're going, we just follow the directions that the smartphone gave us. And that's a pretty big shift, both in how we conceptualize directions, how we prevent ourselves from getting lost, and then you have thousands and millions and bil billions even of people doing this in the future, it has profound changes on how we think in our culture. And you know, we may be at the beginning of what could be a sort of upswing in these kinds of behaviors. Uh, you know, it's true, you know, let's take, take a look at intelligence and knowledge. It's true that knowledge and intelligence is not always in individuals' heads. For example, even with a very hard mathematical proof, you may have to have multiple mathematicians check it to ascertain its truth. Is this really true or not? Uh, the same thing comes up with scientific endeavors. Take a look, for example, for global climate change. It's true that global climate change is caused by carbon emissions, but what got us that truth was an extended network of humans, scientists, in particular, working with uh, you know, large amounts of data, large amounts of computers, simulations, and the combination of the sort of extended assemblage of humans and machines and simulations, this is what let us understand climate change. And I think that if we really take that sort of thing at face value, the fact that we have this low latency, ubiquitous infrastructure for knowledge sharing, like the web, will have vast impact on philosophy. And likewise, philosophers who really take these kinds of changes seriously can give us new impact on how to design new social protocols so we can have new kinds of you know, online communities, for example, uh, Wikipedia being one which has been fairly successful, that are able to not just fill the web full of spam, but design sort of collective processes that can develop things which are basically fairly accurate. It can help us really understand what's true and not when this knowledge is spread out among millions and millions of people. And that's important because that's the ultimate underlying vision behind the internet itself. At MIT, uh, JCR Licklider, the sort of initiator of the internet, uh, basically said that he was looking forward to a day in which humans and machines could together think of new kinds of thoughts, understand new kinds of things that neither a human by themselves or machine by itself would somehow be able to sort of process for machines or understand for humans. And it's this kind of collective intelligence that really is the goal of the web and only by taking the philosophical problem seriously can we gain a real understanding of both the challenges for the future and what kinds of practical problems we can tackle today using a mixture of web technologies and philosophy. So um, congratulations to everyone in Edinburgh doing this work. We really look forward to hearing more about it.